What is up, y'all? It's another beautiful day here in Oregon. Cold, crisp winter morning, and we're gonna try to get into some crop. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a good day. It was a real beautiful drive in as we came over the hill. It was just like this orange, fiery glow Insane, dude. of the I've sunset, seen, like... which you guys probably just saw. We probably threw that sunset as the intro because of how beautiful it was. And then when we came down over the hill, everything was just covered in frosted and white. It was like surreal because the sunset was all fiery and orange and it's just bright, beautiful glow. And then we came over the ridge and there was just like this beautiful white frosting across everything and it just set off the day in a beautiful way. When our day starts with like beautiful orange glowing sunrises, we usually get into some fish that day, so. I'm ready, dude. Let's go get some fish. This beautiful patch of foresty jungle is just pretty awesome. Like thick, thick fern cover all across the ground in here. This is the uh, Northwest rainforest right here. Right? Cool, badass, thick fern cover. And then look at when you go up into the trees, they're just covered in moss. And they've got like this almost spooky, like Halloween-y Halloween -y kind of feel, like all in there, all that all that green, tall, like it's almost like a Northwest Dr. Seussy check kind out, of a check look. Out the moss carpet. Yeah, like. Thick, lush moss carpet. Yeah, you could you could lay down and take a nice nap right there. Fill a fill a pillow sack. I mean, yeah, to survive in the woods, you know, you'd be using this stuff for a pillow <laughs> or a bed. But then look at how badass like all of these trees are, just all covered in covered in moss and mushrooms and stuff. But yeah, this is exactly what we're talking about. Like how badass is all of this moss? It's just thick and on everything. Go down in here into this little mossy cave. I don't really find the woods in the Northwest to be that spooky because I grew up out here and it's home. But there's definitely something just a little bit eerie about being inside of a mossy, Covered cave. Oh, it just looks beautiful up here. Wow, it's just gorgeous down here. The conditions this morning really do look beautiful. And I think we're gonna probably be able to get into some fish. We're hunting down winter steelhead, looking for that fresh chrome, lots of water moving through the system, all flushed out, river levels dropped. And now it's just crisp, clear, beautiful, shallow water. I'm gonna stick some hardware in there, see if I can't get one of these steelhead to pick up a little bit one of <laughs> Never mind. Blah 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 blah. I'm going fishing. Alright guys, so you've seen plenty of times before on our page or our channel that uh, we love rock and spinners. Um, but another tactic that I love to use and I think is also a huge benefit to having in the arsenal is bobber rod. What I can't hit with the spinner back here, I'm going to hit with the jig and bobber. Um, I also like to run the jig and bobber first because it's, you know, my buddy said it best. Chris Heller, this one's for you. A spinner is like an ambulance going down the river. Everybody sees it's coming. Everybody gets out the way if they don't want to be in the way unless they're going to eat it. Um, the jig and the bobber, a lot more stealthy, a lot more quiet. So we throw that in there first, see what happens, and then we'll throw the spinners through. So for me, my most confident color is actually the nightmare pattern, which is a white head, um, black body or red body with a black tail or a red tail. Um, you know, there's different uh, scenarios or builds of that actual jig. Um, but today I got the peach and orange with the white head. I really like the white head. I feel like a jig with a white head, I've had way more luck on on any color as long as I had a white head on it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get this jig wet right now, put the, uh, put the spinning rod down for a minute, and uh, get a couple drifts in, and then we'll get the spinner in. Fish. On the jig. 
Well, look at that. Chris smashes the fish. First cast on the bottom. Is this the cutthroat? It's the beat. This isn't a steelhead. This is cutthroat. It's the beat. What a beautiful little fish, right? Like that, Chris. First cast. Bro, it's a cutty. Really? It's a cut bow. Look at this beautiful fish. This is a cut bow. And it could be a hat. I mean, look at this little nip in its tail right here. This could be a clipper that lost its way. I mean, we don't have an actual clip run on this, uh, this system. But, dude, that's a 22 inch cut bow. That's a gorgeous fish. That is gorgeous. And I can tell because of the cut stripes on the chin. That signifies cutthroat right there, but it's not a cutthroat because of the spots. Jig in the mouth right there, first cast. It was so awesome. Pop that out, bring it up. And one more look at him, dude, that is a beauty. I, dude, I've never caught a cut bow that big out of a creek. Look at that beauty right there. That is a long cut bow. Let's get him back in there. Man, first cast. What kind of luck is that? That was on that uh, peach with the white head, peach and orange. Oh man, that was awesome. You know, we're talking about the jig setup today with the bobber. Um, what I like to run is, you know, and I, I've been taught by a couple really good jig fishermen, and, and literally, if you're taught by the right person, um, it can transition to you catching more fish. Plain and simple. It's all about how you teach that person, right? So I got my jig tied to my 10 pound leader which you want to have around a 24 to 36 inch leader. You know, anything shorter, it's going to be too close to your weight. Anything farther away, and you're going to be dragging your bait or your, your tackle. Um, so I got my, I don't know, probably 30 inch leader here with my quarter ounce um, inline weight, which these are huge if you guys haven't ran these yet. Um, you know, it could tie, has swivels on either end. So I got my, my main line tied to one end, or sorry, my main line tied to one end and my leader tied to the other one. And then I got a bead to uh, protect my knot from my bobber hitting. You know, sometimes I run two beads just to give it that extra protection because eventually your bobber is gonna just cut your line if you don't have a bead, a bead there. Um, I put a bead on top to also block the uh, stopper as well. Um, and that's kind of it. You know, I, I, I think another big tip to it is the fish are gonna come up to it. So if you got a 10 foot hole, you don't want your jig running down at 10 foot. The fact that you're running in the mid column, any fish that's below that's gonna be able to look up at it and get it. Um, so plain and simple, the fish will come to it. So if you're fishing a six foot deep hole, why not run two or three feet? And you know, everybody in the hole is gonna be able to see it and hopefully one's hungry enough for it. So hopefully those little tiny tricks will help you be a better bob. You know, I'm, I'm no pro at bobber angling by any means whatsoever. I catch fish on them. And those are the few tips that I, were I was taught, which honestly it helped me catch fish. And it's perfect to have paired up with my spinner rod and I could fish in any pocket. So give it a shot, try those little tips and tricks and uh, see if you don't put a couple on the bank just because of it. Simple facts, fish on. my bobber in and the fish just took it down right when I started cranking. Definitely a steelhead. Looks like a buck. Nice little buck. That was so wild. I literally made my line, made my run, and as I'm turning the crank to get the bobber back in, boom, bobber goes down, fish on. A little beat up buck. Awesome colors on him. Again, that pink jig. It's kind of feisty. I'm gonna let him run around. These wild fish are a lot feistier than the hatchery fish. He's stuck good. That, that jig's in deep. Look at the colors on that buck. 
pink cheeks, pink side. Look at the pink jig hanging out of his mouth right there. Uh, that is a beautiful winter steelhead right there. Let's pop those summer jig. colors. Yep, he's uh, he's probably already spawned and he's gonna be making his way back down the river here in a little bit. So we're gonna get him back in so he can make his journey back to the ocean and come back and do it again. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, River God. Hey, bud. Yeah. Woo. Look at him go. You, still, you can still see him jetting all the way down there. He's like, I'm going to the ocean today. Bye. <laughs> See you next year. Are you gonna fish today? Or are you? I'm that sorry. was <laughs> so crazy. This camera definitely caught all that. I think the other camera is off, but you guys saw that. It was insane. My bobber, you know, I drifted my line once I got to a certain point, started cranking it back in, and literally just bam, took it. And a uh, nice little buck. So bam. So you guys, look at this wild thing that we just found. I'm not sure exactly what this is. And if some of you know that this is some kind of cool natural phenomenon that always happens, we would love to know what it's called. I'd like to know about this. This, this film right here is just ice. This, it feels like this just melts away. Yeah, it does. Like there's nothing, it's not fungus, it's just water, right? And so, because I touched this, it just melts away underneath my fingers and just turns into ice and then completely goes away into water. What I think is happening is that this stick soaked up enough water that it was like really soaked up in there and it was like kind of waterlogged. And then when it froze, it caused all the water to excrete out. It like slowly squeezed the water out as it contracted and that water froze, kind of like how sometimes the ground will like lift up a little bit and you'll get a little crunch as the ground lifts up like that. I think all of this hair, it looks like hair, looks is like hair. ice is ice hair that slowly just extruded its way, if that's the right word, you know, slowly pushed its way up out of the side of this stick and then so froze. Well. I, I don't know how else to describe it or, or imagine what else is happening here, but like when I touch it, it seems like I'm like, you know, killing something or something like that. But literally all of this is ice. Like, like it's wild. It was Closing so beautiful. Around. Destroying it was weird, but it completely melted away. There's no residue. There's no stickiness to it. All of this stuff right here is just ice and there's no other ice on the ground and there's right we don't see this anywhere else this was one patch sitting here on the ground everything else is thawed out um it's super it's super trippy that was weird i don't even know what ice hair i don't even know what else to think about it <laughs> if anybody if any of the viewers have any idea what this is if you guys want to go 4chan on it and and do a little research and find out i'm really curious as to know what the story behind the ice hair that was growing out of this stick is so Crazy. Cool stuff. The things you'll find, the places you'll go. you guys you know not every day you actually limb it out and fill your cooler but I think every day you can go up to the river and watch your buddy catch a beautiful winter steelhead and still the win Chris got the experience of getting into a nice winter out of the last two steelhead trips we went on Chris actually stuck a real nice fish and I haven't stuck one yet so it's gonna be my turn tomorrow I'll get into my winter Hope you guys enjoy some of the cool scenery from the day, that badass sunrise, and some of our clumbing around in the bushes. So we've been doing the channel for almost a year now, and it's kind of fun. We really enjoy doing it. We weren't sure if we were gonna like really stick to it. It was gonna be a thing that we were like, yeah, this is what we do. We were like, let's make some videos and we'll see how it goes. But we decided that we really like YouTube and we like pumping out videos for you guys and we're having a lot of fun. So 
we're gonna keep on doing that. In addition to just teaching you guys how to catch fish, we like to show you, you know, moral practices, eco-friendly practices, and, and sustainable uh, practices that'll keep these habitats running and producing fish for years to come. So seeing the young cats and the, the guys that we know are gonna be out here fishing more in the future, learning some of these techniques and picking up some of the skills so that they'll, uh, catch fish and keep the river clean that that is a real plus you know we'd like the next generation of anglers to be a conscious angler and i think that that's a, a, you know that's a good one. good number Literally. one on there um little shout out we're gonna get with this um basically you know year anniversary coming up we're really only a few months away from that and we're yeah. starting now so we didn't wait for the one year mark so we got the merch shelf launched and the merch shelf is going to be a lot of fun we're going to just pump out designs we partnered up with teespring was on that and uh teespring it's kind of a cool site it allows us to just throw a design on and you guys to order it without us having to actually print the design and hold all the inventory which allows us to just put a lot of content on there but the cool thing about us getting our merch shelf launched is it's a way that um you guys can show that you're supporting the channel you can get out there and rock fresh fits and it's a little bit of a way that we're you know sending something back out being able to like get a hold of it, some gear that's got some cool stuff on it we're gonna do a bunch of giveaways so we will definitely be um, you know throwing the love back out that direction we're definitely gonna be giving some clothes away definitely be dropping the fresh bite fits on the regular and that's pretty much the best way that you could support the channel if you wanted to throw some yeah. dollars at the channel if you've already um, liked the channel and subscribe yeah you know <laughs> if, uh, if you're a casual viewer just you know hitting like little thumbs up hitting the little sub button so you come back and see us more often that's the number one thing you could do to support the channel yeah to be but, real if you really can't if you really can't afford a bite shirt and you really want a bite shirt and you're a diehard holler at us and we'll figure out how to make sure that we get you a bite shirt because we support we'll out. we support you you know supporting us so we're into it you know but really we just wanted to start getting gear out there we all want to look dope on the river i want the dope face mask that says the bite on it i want i want the little beanie that says the bite embroidered on it. i want a can we fish here shirt you know so and then i don't have to ask the question I can and just then like we don't gotta ask anybody we just point at the shirt you know <laughs> I mean? we're gonna just try to pump this gear out so that you guys can enjoy it once we get newer fresher gear the older gear right now which is still fresh will kind of you know become um retired to become the dope throwback jersey right, throwback. and and uh you guys will be the ones that have them you'll be like oh man look at this dope the bike gear i right. got from a long time ago that nobody has now except for me yeah. i want that right. catch you on the next one yeah.